else. Magpapasalamat po ako kay uh, Secretary Rex for um being uh so open-minded and uh being such a problem solver pagdating doon sa problema ng delisting. Kasi sa, sa pagkakaalam ko, yan na yung problema ang dinatnan niya nung siya po ay unang pumasok sa DSWD. So, bagong-bagong secretary lang siya. Pagdating niya doon, yun ang kanyang natatnan na kailangang mag-reassess ayon sa batas at uh, pwersadong mag-delist um, ayon din sa batas. So, um, at ang uh, at that time, of course, ang available na um, instrument ay yung napakalumang proxy means test. And uh, alam ko naman na sobrang luma nun kasi ako mismo, ginamit ko yun nung nasa UP pa ako. So, that's decades old. So, um, first hand, based on first hand experience, alam kong outdated na talaga yun. So, I thank you for being so open minded and so being so patient, listening to me. And uh, later on, thank you for um, issuing that moratorium. So, tama ba, Sek, na um, you, after you issued the moratorium, you decided na mag-Swede muna para ma-assess kung sino yung mare-retain sa programa. Tama ba yun? Yun ang naging step-by-step. Uh, step. Tama po. And I'd like to thank uh, sa, uh, Congressman Kimbo and Congressman JC for pointing out and yung SNPP group na nasa likod who are beneficiaries na nataranta dahil nga ang lalaki ng mga chunk na nawawala. And uh, we are very thankful kasi you brought it to our attention and that was the trigger actually why we sat down and evaluated and studied. But tama ho yung proseso na nire-narrate niyo. Yes, at nagkataon kasi sa Marikina, 60% ng 4P sang nadilist. Kaya talaga medyo nagpanik talaga kami. So anyway, so having said that, um, so ang first actually na, so okay, going around now, um, there are three reactions ang nakikita ko. So first of all, yung first group, uh, ang super thankful, nagsasabi na ay, salamat, nakabalik na kami. So, yun. Marami yun. Yung second group, nagsasabi na um, natanggal kami. Um, hindi actually sila nagre-reklamo kasi mukhang sa tingin ko naman nakapag-graduate ng mga anak, etc. Okay. So, meron din gano'n naman. Okay. Pero merong third group na Sa, sa tingin ko, um, parang gusto nila mag-air ng grievance. Kasi parang sa tingin nila, at sa tingin ko din, kasi kitang-kita ko sa aking pag-house to house, na talagang mahirap sila. And if you recall, um, SEC, nakiusap ako sa'yo. Sabi ko, SEC, huwag mo naman gamitin yung number ng floors ng bahay as an indicator na non-poor. Kasi dito sa Marikina, sabi ko sa'yo, SEC, ano eh, lagi kami binabaha. So, ang nagiging knee-jerk ng mga tao sa amin is talagang kahit na kaunting pera ang itatabi, ang first na ginagawa nila is nagdadagdag talaga ng palapag ng bahay. So, pero, gayon pa man, kahit na two floors na ang bahay nila, talagang mahirap pa rin sila. So, meron ako na-encounter talaga na gano'n, na tingin ko na dedelist sila as a result of the number of... Um, levels of their house. Pero, so, so may ganon. May tatlong, may third group na parang gustong mag-appeal dahil nat na list sila finally after the Swedish. Pero, yun nga. So, meron bang grievance process at this point? Yes. Uh, like all programs, we encourage grievances. Mm -hmm. We will gladly accept them and re-evaluate them again, reassess them again. In fact, when we met with the SNPP group at the back, I was telling them nga na ipunin nyo or kung kaya nyo, bigay nyo na kaagad sa amin para pagka nagpasada ng Swede, we can revisit them. And I agree, Congressman, even in my former congressional district, merong mga nagsasabi na hindi pa rin ako graduate dapat pero inalis nyo pa rin ako despite the Swede. And uh, we will look at it again. Yes, yeah, so in other words, sana yung mga indicators, mga socioeconomic indicators which are actually coping mechanisms for economic shocks, like the number of levels of the house, coping mechanism kasi yon sec eh. So dapat hindi siguro siya gamitin na automatic mat magiging classified ka as non-poor. Sa tingin ko lang po, sec. So sana yeah. you can um, reassess. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, that's true. In fact, uh, same case in Valenzuela. Mm. Bahain rin ho yung dati kong district. 
and we brought it up during the management committee meeting ng, uh, ng department and we will now review again Swedi mm. to put lesser weight on the coping mechanisms for climate change lalo na, mm. and try to equate other indicators there mm. for poverty but we agree and we will also look into it okay thank you second question sec um can you just clarify dito sa table ng financial performance of four P's, you have a column that says unutilized allotment. So, for many years, yung deficit ninyo zero. So, ibig sabihin, kung tama ang pagkaintindi ko, lahat ng dapat ninyong bayaran, nabayaran nyo. Yes, yes. However, despite that, meron pa rin natirang allotment. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, so ang tanong ko po is for those years, sana po napunta yung cash na yon um na revert po ba yon sa treasury or were you able to keep revert, those yes. it, apparently uh, well from the report of the bureaucrats beside me it was all reverted uh, to the treasury ah uh, the trustee who sobra pa rin so halimbawa isa-isahin po natin yeah. Mr. Chair may 2019 may 2020 na 8.7 may 2021 na 9.8 Sa alin po dito yung na-revert? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm so far sure we don't have that data right now. We'll gather them. But one thing I can tell you, Mr. Chair, the the, the, the provision that si, uh, Congressman Akop read, there was one year wherein we were authorized to pay the previous year's rice subsidies. And dahil two years yung life, we took it from that yes. also, that continuing continuing. Yes. We'll just tally how much was reverted and how much was used to retroactively pay for that 2017-2018 na rise subsidy. Yes, yeah, so can you please let us know kung magkano pa yung natitirang pondo, that's number one. Number two, um, kaya ko rin tinatanong yon, kasi dun sa third group na sinasabi ko kanina na baka pwede pang mariconsider, um, baka naman kaya pa ng kabaitan ng DSWD na ito pong mga na delist initially at di ba may sinabi po kayo sec na there's a third group na wala sa listahan 1, listahan 2 at nawawala. Mm. Baka naman um, so merong mga not found, merong mga uh, ongoing assessment, in short merong mga nasa limbo baka naman pwede po bang habang nasa limbo sila baka naman pwedeng ang treatment na lang sa kanila ay uh, considered in na muna, parang ganon. Uh, uh, and at the same time, if so, baka naman pwedeng may retroactive payment na muna. Yes. Pwede bang ganon? In case, meron pang natitirang unutilized funds. Yes. So yun ang tanong po. Uh, Mr. Chair, three things. Uh, there's a, that's a three-pronged question. <laughs> Number one, unfortunately, we don't have any more cash allocations left. Kasi as you know, the appropriations nga for last year kulang. That's why we have a deficit. And even the actual cash allocation, kinulang kami for last year. We were so, I'm glad to report that you saw that the department was so aggressive in fixing that list that we obligated 99%. But the disbursement rate remained small because of three things, two things. P5, payment 5, period 5, and 6 were due 2024. Pero, at that time, we did not have enough cash or NCA allocation for the appropriation. So, wala talagang nasimot namin yung cash on hand. And uh, But again, let me check on the continuing ilan dun yung ginamit for that rice subsidy and ilan yung na-revert namin in the prior years. So, so, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, ito pong nakasulat na unutilized allotment, wala itong saro. Wala siyang, uh, and wala siyang cash. Cash. Wala siyang wala cash. Siyang yes. In fact... Pero wala tong NCA? Wala. Pero allotment to, ah. Ah, di ba yung NCA note? This of cash allotment yun, ah. So may cash dapat ito. Kaya nga may rin revert kayo sa treasury uh, kasi may cash kayo. Um, are you referring to 2023, ma'am? I'm, yes. I'm referring to... 20, that's why I asked you first about... Um, the prior years. Oh, oh, kasi may 2019, may 2020, 2021, to, up to 2023. And these are huge numbers. Yes. May halos kulang-kulang 9, 10 billion per year. So malaking amount yan pag isuma total. Um, ang tingin ko, meron ditong substantial amount na hindi pa na-revert. 
sa treasury? Uh, Madam Chair, here's what we'll do. So, uh, this is accurate now. We just drew it. All the content, kasi, Madam Chair, uh, what, uh, what, Mr. Chair, what will happen, I would uh, surmise is, since every two, year, it, two years, it becomes continuing. Yes. As, at this point, all our continuing approaches were fully utilized already. Uh, nagamit lahat to um, in the following year. Kasi there was one year even, last year, where we had to retroactively pay the rise ng uh, 2017 and 2018. Okay. Ah, rin yun. So, so... But Mr. Chair, let me get all the data for those prior years and report back to the committee. So, so the way to read this table is cumulative. Tama no. ba? No, this is not cumulative. No, no. This is yearly. No, so halimbawa po, um, 2020, may natirang 8.7 billion. Yes, then we'll use it for the succeeding year. Uh -huh. So, pagdating ng end 2021 na 9.8, um, naubos na yung previous na 8.7. Correct, correct. Okay, and so on and so forth. Yes, So, correct. pagdating ng end 2023 na 769, yung previous balances, na, it, nawala na. Ginamit na natin doon. Uh Oo. -oh. Yes, so, parang, we were... parang siya ngayon, I should just be looking at the 769 not yes, end correct, 2023. Correct. Yes, ma'am. So, yes. ang, ang tinatanong na lang natin is ano yung status ng 769? Uh, the 769, yan yung mga for the administrative cost kasi meron mga DTR submission, di ba, the okay. succeeding year. At this point in time, nagamit na disburse na rin ho lahat siya. Okay, so, so malamang sa malamang? Wala na po. Uh, the actual okay. continuous probation, wala na hong natira. So, simot. Simot. In fact, at... If uh, the beneficiaries behind you can attest to this, yung P5, pay period 5, was supposed to happen in December. But because we did not have to cash on hand, we did it piecemeal. Kung ano lang yung meron pa kami, we paid certain regions ahead vis-a-vis -vis other regions that were paid nung January. We just wanted to make sure masimot namin. Okay, so kung kami po ay um, appealing for DSWD to be even more generous... Ano pa ang pwedeng source of cash? Meron Mr. Pa Mr. Ba? Chair, ang worry ko, Meron pa ba? my biggest worry Wala right na. now will be we're running a deficit for those Wala in talaga. the program already. Oo. Adding more, Wala na talaga. Wala na. But, remember a while ago I said we are only at 4.2. We are reviewing another 400,000 who are what we call the, the ones that drop out of the face of the earth. Listahanan 1, yes. Listahanan 2, yes. Then listahanan 3, no, wala sila bigla. So ngayon, in that 400,000, we will have to look for them one by one. Pag wala na talagang mahanap, then there will be slots that will open up. And potentially, we can enroll them in those slots. And uh, so how much is, is that? 400,000 na lang huyo na tit. Kasi we're only down to 200. No, but those are heads, right? 400,000 heads. Uh, households. Households. Yeah, so amounting to a total budget of? Uh, the appropriation for that? Uh, for about 10% of total. Compliance based, but if they all so maximum, 10 billion. Uh, let's say maximum. About 10 billion. Check, check, check. But to clarify, ang maabsorb nun is not 400,000. Kung papasok yung lahat, eh, ma-qualify, that's only 200. You have Kung only... Kung mahanap sila. Kasi yeah, from our and you have only 200,000. Yes, but because from our experience, uh, hindi ho rin sila lahat Yeah, mahanap. because you're only allowed for 2.4, di ba? Uh, yes, we're uh, only down to 200,000 open slots. Yeah, but you have to check pa yung 400. 400 yes. Yes, diba? So, so out of the 400, may 200 lang talaga na pwede. Just in case na pwedeng pumasok. More Tama? likely. Diba? More likely. Okay. Of the 400, okay. Yes. okay, so, last set of questions na lang, um, Mr. Chair. Nabanggit niyo po yung CBMS and I completely agree na it's very important to um to ask ano ba yung next steps dyan. Um, yes, nasa unprogrammed siya and Pasensya na, but ang appreciation ko is the ball is in your court, executive. Because we, on the part of Congress, we had already approved it. Yeah. So as far as we're concerned, we had delegated it to you, the executive. So, um, as and we've already talked about it at the LEDAC. At this point in time, unfortunately, the ball is in your court. So, yes, I agree with you. Pagtulungan natin how we can push for um, that 
to be released. Uh, released yes, but but you know, it's in that, the that, yeah. So so that's that's my first point. Um, second point is, uh, is it? Because parang to be honest with you, uh, I've done so many surveys in my professional life. It will take a long time. Di natin maasahan na CBMS will come this year. That's, I think, virtually impossible. And particularly because you need to think about building the capacity of, of the LGUs to actually run a CBMS. And that, to me, is the biggest challenge. If you think that the biggest challenge is to get the funds out, I don't think so. I think the bigger challenge is to, to get the LGUs up to par, to actually run those surveys individually. And to make sure that the quality of the data is sufficient so that we can make good sense of the data and to actually use high quality data mm. to, to run a, a very good program like for a piece. So that to me is the bigger challenge. Um, so, so in my head, um, let's think about um, what we have today, which is the Lisaanan. So I know that it's old. However, um, I think there are ways to um, yeah. Im improve upon it. Yeah. And I think one way is, kasi right now, ang kulang lang naman is dalawa, yung grievance na pinag-uusapan natin, and I think you're open naman to that. Um, there are existing grievance mechanisms, so it's really just a matter of being more proactive, etc., etc. But number two is the intake. Yung paano yung mga bagong poor yeah. or yung mga bata na poor na bagong pamilya, bagong mga nanay na all of a sudden nagko-qualify na pala sila, yun yung challenge. Yeah. So sa tingin ko, because you already have um, staff on the ground, pwede niyo bang pag-isipan na baka yun ang kailangan yung ilagay na dagdag na mechanism. Sa, at the barangay level, meron kayong links, di ba? Baka sila yung pwede ng, ano eh, maglagay lang kayo ng announcement na yeah. magsa-self-rate lang yeah. sila eh. Kung But, kayo ay... Um, buntis or may mga gantong may tat, may anak na papasok na mini magko-qualify na um, and then checklist lang yon na madali pwede na po kayong magpa-assess at baka kayo ay maisama sa four piece yeah. and then yung links na ang mag a para pwede na silang maswidi at sa tingin ko that's also an easy way to actually add on to our existing listahanan. So, yeah. that's just my mm -hmm. humble mm -hmm. recommendation to the good secretary. Mr. Chair, uh, Congressman Kimbo, number one, um, yung, apparently, I'm just being the spokesman ng PSA and NEDA. In reality, they're the ones who are put to task sa CBMS. Mm. From their report to us, the 4th, fir 5th the class and 6th class municipalities na CBMS tapos na, according to them. Uh, that means we're left with the first, second, third, and the highly urbanized cities. So they are quite confident, according to them, that they can get it done soon. Well, but that's their word. And I agree with you that it's a tedious process. That's one. Number two, there, true, there are other ways to maximize pa. Pwede pang pigain si listahanan. One of the things that we're looking at is, let's say the areas where our people graduate. Let's say, for instance, Marikina, they graduate 60,000. We can use listahanan, superimpose it with the FIES na kakalabas lang, superimpose it with whatever other data there is and try to make sense kung nasaan tong mga household na to. Um, at least yung raw number, alam natin. So, alam bawa, 60,000, we can try to use other available data. Uh, but you're correct, the dynamic registry is something that the department's already studying. In fact, countries around the world are already veering away from a static registry to a dynamic registry. ADB, World Bank, they've been pushing the department to do dynamic registry, like you said, wherein we let it's demand-driven. We are currently wanting to pilot it already in areas that are smaller, like Pateros, and one more rural area, uh, because it's the wave of the future, we believe. It will take time to design it, it will take time to implement it, but we are already agreeing with you that etong static way of doing it kasi is already archaic in some countries. Sa kanila puro dynamic na, like you said, nakapost yung basic criteria, there's a portal, they go in, then we reassess. Absolutely correct, uh, Mr. Chair. Last point, Mr. Okay, Chair. Okay, that will be your last. Uh, okay. okay. Um, I think the, the use of FICE, the latest FICE, is to redo the proxy means test and to um, use it against the latest census so that you 
you still generate a new listahanan and then you use that as a counter check against a CBMS so that um, it's, it's just a, a counter, it's just a fallback for CBMS so that at least alam natin na Yes, yung, I mean, yung intensity of poverty, yes. We don't know kasi kung anong kalalabasan ng CBMS. Eh. So at, Correct. at any point in time, alam mo na kasi kung anong behavior ng listahanan eh, at ng proxy means test. Alam mo na yun eh. So there, there's no surprises there. At least with a new with a new FICE and then the new census, in-update mo lang yun. Yes. So now, now you have at least listahanan four. Um, and then yan na lang ang pang-check again, parang konsyensya na lang siya yeah. ng CBMS. Uh, the word listanan for, I will have to check kasi parang we're barred from doing any more new targeting. Um, you can but it, have yes, uh, university We'll still work it. on listanan 3 but an upgraded version of it using that as a counter check. In fact, that's the recommendation of PSA with us. Counterbalance siya uh, to give us the intensity kung nasaan yung mga hot spot ng poverty and you're right. Absolutely correct, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Maraming Thank you. salamat po mga ka-blessings.